Hello everyone, welcome back to the next part of our tutorial series. Uh, for this part, we're going to be focusing on obviously the last block, the, the top block of our tower. And we're going to be using quite a lot of similarity or quite a lot of similar methods as our second block. So the principle is the same. Uh, it's just that we have, since the top block is a little bit different in terms of how it's built, uh, we're going to be using uh, slightly different components, but the principle is the same. Uh, don't worry, I will guide you through that. And after the block is built, um, we can start to um, fine tune our tower a little bit, like the detail as you can see here. What we have here is a solid block that goes all the way up to the roof, but in reality, um, this is like a roof terrace. So what I mean for us is that our, our core, um, selected in green here, um, should actually go up to only the, the, the second to last level, meaning this level here. So we're going to be taking that and then our columns will obviously run down. We might have to do something about the, uh, the floors that's going to be in here. But those are the little details that we're going to pick up at the end uh, once you've constructed all the blocks. The same thing goes for um, the glass balustrades um, that you might have noticed picked up on the renders that I've made in the intro videos. So those are going to be the things that we're going to be tackling after we completed everything. So um, roughly estimation, I would say there's going to be this part and um, maybe one part after that. And that's going to be picking up all the little small details. Okay, so with that said, let's get on to our final block. Um, we're, going to be, we're going to begin with copying some of the essential stuff. Uh, for example, actually, let's switch to our hybrid view. Uh, something like this could work. Actually, I prefer a little bit more plan view since the tower is quite long, uh, quite tall. All right, uh, I'm going to disable the first block so that we can let, have less distraction. This one, I will disable the core since I know how the core looks like and I don't need to see it and also the floors so we're gonna get the floors from here so we're gonna copy this one this one and this one the group obviously the secondary arc uh the floor we will also need that but i'm gonna copy this one first to see what we're dealing with so i'm gonna enable that and i'm gonna say block select it's gonna be two since that's the last one Okay, so that's our outline. Um, for you, this could be different in the sense that your outline could be at the top or at the um, at the right. It doesn't really matter. It's on one of the ends, and that's what we're going to be working with. And now that we can see, oh, uh, we still need to copy. Actually, we need to. Uh, if you remember correctly, we actually reused the. Uh, secondary column outlines from our block that's below the level we're working on in order to get the seamless flow of columns or columns that run through uh, all the blocks. So we're going to do the same here and we have to go and identify this is, this is our column. We're going to track back and see which are the outlines that we can use. Obviously not these because this will include every column. So I think this one uh, also not this one, I prefer not to pick this one because this one include, actually let me disable that one, because this one include um, the other side too. And what we really want to do is, uh, we'll take this side and we copy over on that side using a mirror line. Of course we're going to be doing some filtering first in order to select only, I would roughly say these, or perhaps not even that one. But we'll have to see. But this is uh, our course of action and how we're going to approach it. So, not that. Uh, what's this? Hey, this can be something that we can select. Or actually, we might need to tweak this a little bit um, because this one only selects the middle part. And what we would really want is actually including, I think, the two. If I follow. 
at first, let me see what D2 is. Okay, so D1 is certainly not the one we want. So that means we want D2 and D3. And one easy way we can do this, uh, we can actually plug in a third merge just before these two. So that makes it easier for us to select the data that we want. So we can actually easily say, uh, let's put the, if you can't hold in control and shift, you can actually replace the drag your input. So we can drag input, let's say, it doesn't really matter which one you put into, uh, just pick one. I'll pick D2 since this component is at the top and then this one goes in here. You can disable that. I'm going to quickly add this to the group so that it moves with the group. And now I can add this to D2. The result's going to be the same. But now we have a selection that's all um, the, uh, those columns on the outer curve, the big curve. So we can actually, actually let me drag this all the way to here so I can easily connect this. And I'm going to set this to uh, block one secondary column. And I'm going to drag this back down. OK. So with that being done, we now have to uh, move everything to the right level. So I'm going to come in here and copy a few things. For example, the amount of floors for block 1 and block 2 and the floor height. And I'm going to copy those in here. So obviously, in order to um, move all our outline up to the right level, uh, it means that we have to combine block 1 and block 2, and that will give us the total floors up to where uh, the last block will begin. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to do a simple, actually let's do an evaluate, keep it a little bit clean. And I'm going to add a Z value because now we have 3. What I want to do is I want to calculate the uh, maximum height of uh, block 1 and 2 combined. So I'm going to plug into all the inputs in this one and in our expression in our formula we're just going to say x plus y uh, I'll put that in brackets so that that one gets uh, added first times the floor height and this will give us the total meters uh, of where our final block should begin and now I can use this to move everything in place so I can say move um, And I move that up. And I can disable that, and we can no, we no longer have to look at that. So now, this is at the height of where we should begin. Um, I am missing my main outline, or rather my main columns, which are these ones. So I'm going to copy that one too. Setting out, secondary setting out. So I'm going to copy that. Uh, balcony depth also floor to. But I can copy this whole thing, to be honest. So let's copy uh, all these for now. It's going to be a little bit messy, but we can clean up right uh, really uh, fast right after. Actually, let's separate it a little bit. Okay, first things first. We have outline which is our main column outline. And we're going to connect block 2 into the path. And our new Z, so that we have our main columns outline. The same goes for our uh, uh, block select for this item. And this one has been moved. So I'm going to copy this one here. The index should be number 2. And then we have the outline. And what's this? The floors to skip. Um, this looks like a floor height. Yes, it is. Uh, so I have the floor height right here. I'm going to connect that here. The floor height needs to be connected here also, it seems. And there's one more. 42. I think this is the floor of um, uh, for the block 3. So that one I have to get all the way from here, which is this one. So I'm just going to copy that. And I'm going to control shift V to place it in the center so I can easily drag it. 
and I can put that in here. And there's one more that we have not, oh, actually copied wrong. This one is okay. I need to put it in this A here. Floor thickness, uh, not used yet, but we'll come to that later. The same as for balcony depth, so I'm going to move that a little bit down. Okay. Now let's open up this one. So we need to actually copy um, our uh, columns to the right level so we can start manipulating it. Uh, what I'm going to do is, actually I'm going to project it to this level. So I'm going to do a XY plane. Actually we could have done that for all, instead of moving we can actually also do a project. But both work the same way so it should be fine. And now, now that I've created my plane that is um, where it should be, I'm going to do a project to plane, which is project object into plane, which is this one. Can be found under transformation, um, a fine, and project onto plane. So the projected geometry is goes into G, and the P is the plane. There we have it. Oh, I should not disable that. We want to see it. Okay. Uh, let me... I can leave that on. That's okay. What's this though? I can also leave that on. These are outcome. Okay. Yeah, these are curves that we want to. Now, if you remember correctly, um, how, the way we filter this is we actually um, used a, a tween curve in between here in order to find... Uh, the center point of these column, if they're within a tolerance of 0 0.1, I believe, then I want to keep those. So we're going to do the same here. Um, we don't have to explode our tree because, well, we only have one. And in that tree, we have two items. So we don't need to explode that. We can get straight to our list item. I'm going to copy that and plus one. And I'm going to tween my curve. If you forget, it's on the curve and tween curve, uh, spline. So B default it's set to 0 0.5, meaning it will tween in the middle. So we can leave that as is. Now that I have my tween curve, and I'm going to need, I can actually flatten this. Let's flatten this one. Oh, uh, there we go. And now I'm gonna say area and do point closest to my curve. Let's take the C. The A is just area. It's a number. And we can do it evaluate. And do I, can I copy the evaluate there? Yes, I can. I'm going to copy that one. Control Shift V. It's the same formula, so it's easier for us to just copy it. And I don't need that one. We're going to plug in the distance, and now we can do a call pattern on top of this one, and we're going to be calling our columns with the pattern that we created. And there we have our columns are selected. So these columns, these six columns, are basically running all the way up to from level 2, as you can see here. So they align perfectly well. Whether this one should align, well, in our current configuration, it doesn't. But if you had like a smaller or a bigger um, fillet here, remember we made this into a fillet, for example, and that was all the way here. So if you were to say this fillet is bigger, which like, let's say 10, you probably get around here. Yeah, then this... Pro this column right here probably would not qualify and I would think that I have now five, which I do. So it's now started because it's slightly off-centered from our curve. So this distance is higher than 0 0.1 uh, meters. Oh, I should set this back to meters. Yep, there we go. So it really depends on what your setting here was, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I think 10 is a little bit too round, so I'm going to go with uh, 8. I think the previous value was 
and now I should have six columns in this one, which is fine. Okay, so now that you understood that part, we can now start to um, create the other ones. Uh, what we're going to do is we are we need a mirror plane. In order for us to create that mirror plane, is uh, we need somehow a perpendicular on that, and that one way we can do that is let's say one of these curves we're going to say actually we can actually take the twin curve which is also fine uh, what we're going to do is do a CRV evaluate a curve evaluate I'll reparameterize it so that I can select the middle point by entering 0 0.5 here and let's do a factor display and you can see that our vector is pointing that way so what we can do well, actually, we don't even need this. We can just do a perpendicular frame, to be honest, which can be found under Curve, Analysis, Perpendicular Frame. Uh, remember, there's two perpendicular uh, components. There's one that gives you a lot more planes, which uh, gives specify a number for you, and the other one has uh, will give you one plane, but you will have to select a uh, specified parameter, which is fine, because it's... 0.5, we know that. And we can actually just use this as our mirror plane. So we can actually get rid of that. And we have our mirror plane now. So we can do mirror. The F goes into the plane, the P input. And we mirror that. Oh, it's actually a little bit off center. And that's because we're mirroring on the twin curve, which we probably shouldn't then. Because this gives what error. So let's take one of the original curves so that we can always be sure because I think the tween curves messes up the direction a little bit. Um, what I just showed you, if you were to do a, uh, what do you call it, the CRV evaluate, and you do the vector, the vector might have been a little bit different. So in hindsight, it's, it, it is just much safer to do it from the original or as original geometry as as back um, as far in the early stages you can so this will give us a nice let's disable that and enable this one so this one gives us the other columns now we need to do is find a way so I can just disable that find a way to fill this gap and I think what we would like to do is have this gap filled in a manner because looking at this configuration and the fillet of 8, a value of 8, what I suspect to see uh, will be a column that's going to be perhaps like here and one here. What I want to do is I want to keep an equal distance between that, but it, because this radius is so small, um, it can change drastically depending on that radius. But uh, what I want to do is actually find out uh, this width here and try to apply it uh, into these points in order to uh, get a very nice division or a very uh, logical divisioning on for these two. So that's what I want to try to do. Let's clear my screen. And then let's see what we can do here in order to uh, make that happen. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Uh, first, we need to extract that piece over there that we need to modify. And what I suggest is uh, we will have to make a choice which one we want to see as leading. Do we want the inner curve to see it as leading or the outer curve? Uh, but let's leave that. Um, let's build it in a way where we can still select that the way we want it. Uh, but first, what I want to do is actually merge um, these two sides together for now. And we can do this. And with that, uh, let's make a curve component so that we can switch this off. Uh, for now, I think it might make more sense to take the inner one. Uh, because the radius can be so small and has so such a big effect 
on our curve that if we take the inner curve as leading uh, we will always have enough space so if you were to have, take the outer curve as leading and you might just have enough space uh, it could cause that the inner columns um, and the inside let's say can be very close together let's say if you take the inner curve as leading then we can control that if you I hope you know what I mean um, so for this I'm gonna take the inner column as leading inner curve and what I want to do now is uh, I want to shadow that I want to pick out that piece there and the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna first uh, take these two here and I'm gonna shatter my inner curve with all these points of course I'm gonna pull them to the curve first and then I select that curve so with that I'm gonna do uh, point closer to curve so that I can pull those points onto my curve and I also get my parameter for the shattering so the C goes into P and that's my curve and now I can do a shatter, not shader, shatter, shattering that curve based on these param uh, parameters. I can disable that. And now I have uh, 13 pieces. In order for me to select the middle one, uh, you might want to say, okay, let's let's just select 13 divided by 2. It's at either 7 or 12. So if you do like 7, we're not selecting it. But if you do like six, then you are. But you can think of a logic way to say, all right, the list item here is always going to be minus one divided by two. Hmm, is that always going to be right? Uh, not sure. If you're unsure about that method, I suggest you not use it. But what I suggest, and uh, it's a bit more uh, secure and stable, is let's do a point-to-point -point comparison. Let's create a point that's um, uh, in the middle of our curve and then we select uh, the pieces that is closest to that point. So let's do a CR evaluate, uh, not the normal evaluate, the curve evaluate, which is this one. I'm going to reparameterize this curve because I want to select the utmost middle point, which is 0 0.5. And I can actually now do, I can copy that one. Now I want to find the curve, the curves that's closest to my middle point, which are my shatter curves. And if I do a sort, so the distance is here. So I can already see um, that I will need the one that is a zero, the one that shows zero distance, because that's the closest point. Uh, that's the closest point to my the closest curve to my point and I'm gonna sort them by the distance and synchronize it with the shattered curves so now if I do list item the very first item is gonna be the curve that I want there we go uh, very secure and I can now be sure that this method will always work it independent of how many uh, columns do I have, it will always select that middle section. All right, so with this being selected, I can actually do a length to find out uh, what is the length of this section. So I'm going to put a temporary panel in here, 14, 50 meters. So, but first I want to see what are the distance between, um, between these columns actually. So I have this, what I can do is I can actually use this and find the distance. I just need two points from here in order to find that distance. So let's do a list item. Well, actually, let's find out how these points are, um, are ordered. So let's do a point list, which is this one. And I might have to increase it a little bit. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So it seems like our ordering is not as perfect as I th uh, hoped it would be, um, which can give you complications. So what I was hoping to do is I'm gonna do a list item since this is a 
I'm going to flatten the list just in case. It's already flattened, but in the case that it is not, then it, it will always be flattened here. And then I'm going to take the first point and the next, and then I will have the uh, distance between these two points. And I can divide this with this, and I, I know how many times should I divide my uh, top curve right there. But the problem can be, I mean, now it's okay since I know that 0 is here and 1 is here, so I'm taking a look at these two, and which will be okay. But what what is this 5? So what are the chance that for whatever odd reason, uh, my 0 is here and my 1 is there? Then we'll have a distance that is not what we want. That will not have 5.1, but we'll instead have like uh, 10, perhaps, which is not true. So let's do a preventive uh, sorting process before here I would say somewhere around here in order to make sure that our script will always uh, run or without, to ensure that we always get the data that we expect so let's do a simple sort sort along the curve this one uh, we're gonna sort our points along the curve where they come from so now, if you put this into the list order, the point list will be much better. So if I were to select uh, zero run now from these new points, I will still get uh, roughly the same distance. It's a little bit different uh, in this case because zero and 11 are actually um, sitting on the side that has the straight section. It's not where the curves starts to bend and that's why you see a small variation in uh, a small deviation in the distance but if you're not comfortable with that that's fine what you can always do is instead of selecting from one you can just select the one that's above it so if you put in the distance in one here you select the pair that's one and two instead of zero and one um, it can be risky if you were to configure the tower in the sense where your uh, outline starts to run like like this. Then you might have a problem. But if your outline starts to run like this, then you're um, really using um, variables that are more or less invalid. Because the whole reason why we have this shape instead of a very round shape is... Uh, We've built this in order to prevent that, and if you go back to that, then you can actually delete this whole log, whole block of uh, components. So, uh, under the assumptions that that will never happen, that at least one to three, uh, zero one to three will be exactly the same as we expected, we can use this. If you're still uncomfortable, you can leave it at zero, which is which will work fine. It will work fine. But I will leave this at um, selecting 1 and 2. But either way, we'll work fine. So now we can say, uh, let's, actually let's do it evaluate. Let's, let's plug that to the x and this to y. And our formula is very simple, x divided by y. Not times y, x divided by y. Which gives us a value, oh actually we should do it the other way around. The larger value divided by the smaller value, which gives you 2.8. And if I were to do a uh, divide curve uh, from our filter out section and plug that one in, what happen or uh, what will happen is you will have a number of three because the count only takes in integers, as you can uh, see by the icon there with a seven in it, the black icon. Uh, that signifies uh, the integer and if you want to learn more about that you can always go to param and see what all these um, uh, data types that it can select you can actually quickly glance that's a nice tip actually you can actually glance like wh what is the input expecting me to give it in for example if you look at this it expects a curve a curve can be a line it can be planar it can be non-planar doesn't really matter and a k Split at kings, which is that? Is that a boolean? That's a boolean. If you look at where is the boolean in this one? Oh, here. 
So that's a boolean. Primitive types, integers, text, number. Number can be floating as dictated by the 0 0.1, comma 1, and so on and so forth. So that's a nice tip to uh, easily identify, okay, what, what is this component expecting me to give it to? Expression was an F. Well, F can be also text. I, think, I don't think expression is here. But you get the idea. Okay, uh, with that said, um, what will happen is it will, the end will convert our decimal into an integer. And by default, the system will round it to the nearest number. So I'm expecting a 3 if I put this in here, which it is a 3. Uh, why am I seeing so many points actually? Oh, I have that one, so enable, and let's do so that one. So we can see that we now have uh, three sections, which equals to four points. So we will have two columns here. Now let's get rid of these panels. And I would say that's acceptable. So we can just say, let's leave the system decide uh, when to round it up, round it down or round it uh, to its nearest number or always rounded to the upper number. So we'll leave it to default. Uh, this looks like a very good uh, divisioning. And uh, now let's uh, see how we can actually build. Well, we have a parameter here. What we also know is we don't want the start and the end for sure. Uh, we don't want those. So let's start getting uh, before we get to that part what we want to do uh, let me sketch that out uh, I actually want to say I want that width to be applied here and for the same reason I want the other width which is like in our case slightly higher to be applied here and for this one the same goes for here So that's, that's our goal. That's what we want to achieve. So we might have to do some pre-select filtering uh, in order to select that one and this one or any of those and use that for our parameter, which can be plus and minus uh, whatever the length is, whatever half of the width is. So exact same method that we use throughout in the other block. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, let me clear the screen. To grab the um, the width that we need, what we can do is uh, we can actually sort. Oh, too much double click. We can actually sort our um, our columns here based on the index that we've done for our points. Because uh, if you trace back, the points comes from the uh, point closest to the curve, which comes from the uh, the center point that is the columns. So if I were to do a list item from our columns and apply the index for this, now our columns will be sorted. If I were to do another list item, actually a list item on top of this list item, I'm going to do a slider. Let's do a number of sliders. So as you can see on my uh, Rhino viewport, we are now sorted our columns in the same way that we sorted our points. And with that, what we can do is we can now easily go in, oh, we can easily go in here and select the middle one or any, any column that is not the start or the end. So we can actually come in here and just say, okay, I'm going to select one, uh, which can also work. Unless you have a straight section that is far longer than than what we said initially, where only one um, columns will qualify to be in that position. So what I suggest we can do is let's do a list item. Actually, list length. I'm sorry. List. Where's my list length? List length. So we can do that one and plug that one in here. And plug that one in there, and then we're going to do expression, the amount of items we have divided by two. So now we are selecting one of these two that's in the middle uh, of the pack. 
then we can just ignore that. Now we have our um, columns. Letter. What we can do is we're going to explode uh, my uh, curve. Now you might want to think, okay, in order for us to select the width as at the uh, that corresponds to the inner circle, the inner curve and the outer curve, which let me explain that by giving them a color, which is easy to explain. Let's say we have the magenta and the blue. So in order for us to select those, you can easily say, okay, let's not, why not just do a list length, I mean a, a, a curve length, and we can sort that, right? We can sort that. And hey, there we have it. Zero and one. Those are the two that we want. Yes, unless you set your balcony height, your balcony depth to one. What happens then? Then suddenly the 3.5 you see here turns into one. And one is always smaller than 1.1 or 1.2. And that will, that can give you issue. And the issues is more uh, exaggerated. If you set your balcony depth to 0 0.5, then suddenly the columns... The value that you were expecting is not going to be the same because then we are looking at a different uh, value that is, then your columns will look different than the rest. That's what I'm trying to say. So um, I can understand that in your back of your head, you might think like this can be done so much easier. Why Why are we taking a long route? Um, this is the reason why I want to avoid. Uh, in a scenario where this can happen, if you can eliminate it, do it. And that's what I intend to do. And what I want to do here is actually I want to get my explode back. With this explode, I'm going to say the curve that is closest to the outer curve is the one that I want for my outer curve. The one that's closest to the inner curve uh, is the one that I want for my inner curve. And I'm going to apply um, deploy the same method for uh, that we've deployed before. So I'm going to do a CRV evaluate in order to get a center point. So I'm going to reparametize that. I'm going to do a uh, 0 0.5. And I'm going to do point closest to curve. None of these. Uh, point closest to curve, that one. So the first one I want to, I want to select from this is the outside curve. So I'm going to drag from that component uh, the outside curve. Uh, or maybe we should do like this one and make it... Mm, now, nah, should we? Yeah, we can. Why not? But we can also give... Let's just give it a name also. Uh, let's just give it uh, out, outer. Outer? Inner. Let me get these. Now we can hide this one. Now we can say, I want to select the outer curve. And I'm going to sort this by their distance. And the curve that I want to select, I want to synchronize the sort is the shattered version. So now if I do this item from 1, let's hide all that. Then I'll always have that curve. And I can easily do a uh, list length, which will give me its... Um, with value, which will always be the one that I want to, uh, that I would expect to have. The same can be applied for the inner curve. So I might have to actually, this is the part that I need. So I'm just going to copy that part right down here. And the curve I want to replace is obviously from outer to inner. It's going to be in this one. So now I have my inner curve and also the value for that. So with those two selected, we can uh, begin working uh, using those values in our shattering for. Now we have the inner curve, which is the bottom one. I recognize it for now. This the value that's the lowest. So before we begin, I want to um, call away the start and end points, and we can actually use our trick of double calling. That's double calling, and we'll call this as zero. I'm going to call that away. Oh, I'm going to reverse this, reverse that, and then I can do another call and not reverse this and reverse that. So if you want to see how that looks like, these are the two points that I'm selecting right now. But I actually want the parameter. Actually, let's have this open and we can see that. Okay, so with that tool selected, we can do now is do a evaluate. 
um, for I'm going to plug in the width of the inner column of the inside of the column to the X and the other um, to the Y in my formula. Can I copy that from here? I know I have that formula somewhere. Interesting. Con I can't seem to find it. Okay. Doesn't matter. Uh then we will write that again. So what we want is um let's divide our x first. So we want to divide our whip by two plus the current uh parameter value. So that is our formula. And for the next one, what we want to do is put in a negative because it has to go the other side. And I'm going to put in a negative from the width of my column that goes back into X. And what that should give me is four values that we can shatter our curve with. So I'm going to shatter uh, the inner curve, which is this one. with those items, I'm going to merge them first. And just to be sure, let's apply a sort. I don't think it matters, but it's always nice to have clean data and know what you're working with. And now I'm pretty sure I can now copy that one. Let's copy and then control shift V. Uh, let's hide all this and see if we have actually that's, I don't need those anymore. Let's put this in a nicer spot. I'm going to put this in the middle. Something. This can go all the way up there. Doesn't really matter. Okay. So let's see if we have it. Oh, first try. I'm expecting two, yeah, two values. Uh, now we can move on to the upper curve. Those or that okay so what I want to do with the upper curve is um, I have my points come to think of it maybe I can also uh, apply a double calling to my points because what I want to do with my point is I want to do a point closest to curve and that curve is my outer curve and I want to apply uh, these points to it so I can get the same points where they should be um, but looking back, I I have to apply this double calling either way before I plug it in or after. So, hmm, should I do it before or after? You know what? Let's do it here instead and apply that there. So we can actually disable that one. Now disable all these. What's this? We can disable that. What's that? Oh, we need to see that. Okay, now that we have a two points, we can apply the same thing. So I'm just going to copy this whole bunch. Ooh, okay. Let's try to focus. Um, this is our length, which one should go into the X, the other goes into the other X. And the T goes into the Y for both. And the shattering of our curve is going to be based on the outer curve. So that goes into the C of this one. I think we have it. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let's disable this one so we can see it better. And disable all this bunch so we can see that better. Still, we have something on. Where is it? This one. Gee. Let's have a tween curve open so we can actually see the outline of a curve. Okay. Um, now that we have that, we can come in here and do a combine. And one of these curves needs to be flipped, otherwise we're going to have a X uh, sort of curve connect. So let's connect our curves together and we put the G to position and there we have it. Our, oh, it seems uh, you might think like, wow, all this for uh, two columns. Well. 
these columns uh, are actually now interactive. So we can actually come in here. Let's enable. I think this is the app. So if you were in, in a scenario where, uh, let's say, your fillet is your fillet is a way different. Let's say, um, let me just say this one. Let's say you have uh, I don't know the tender we talked about, which is a lot more bulgier. Now you get I think it's divided by five, perhaps. How many curves do I have here? Three. So these are the ones that are now generated for you. If you were to have a fillet of ten. Uh, let's go to the other way, the extreme. I'm not sure what we have in here. Then I think it didn't make any column because that distance is smaller than your width. Aha, uh -huh. which can dictate because there's no more values. There is no values at all. And that's why you don't have anything. I mean, it's red, uh, but we know why it's red. That's important. So now you can see, okay, like if you were to go to five, then you can be sure that there's nothing there and you don't need that to be there because if you enable the um, this one, which comes from blocks, um, block two, you will see that it, it is very unlikely that there's going to be a column there. But if you really do want a column there, you can make it happen. Uh, all you need to do is to set a minimum. And that minimum you can set into the curve division, which I think I'm trying to look for it. Where do we start dividing our curve? Mm -mm, let me see this one. Let's make it a panel there so it can be easier to spot next time. Oh. So let's say you say, okay, now I want the floor, or actually I want the ceiling of this uh, division. So you're trying to, you, you're already making this into an integer. Well, you'll see you will always have at least one, uh, the top, uh, you will at least have one divisioning there. But this means that you're, you're forcing the rounding to go up, which can or may or may not give you results that you would like. So if I were to increase this all the way down to very small, you will still have that column. In this way, well, that's way too small to have anything there. Three is a little bit, I mean, two is a little bit too. I mean, you're not, we're not even, uh, doing anything with that curve right now. I think the fillet is like, there is no fillet on the inner curve, that's the problem. So I think the lowest you can go is equal to your balcony depth. Uh, I think our balcony depth is 3.5. So 3.6 give you something, but that something is, well, you, I don't think you want a column like that. So in this way, you can actually influence it or you can leave it to the system to decide uh, how you want that to look. Now that we've had it to ceiling, um, if you go back to 8, you probably won't notice anything because at 8, our our decimal number that comes from the R was 2.8 and this will round it up to eight, uh, 3, it will round it up. So we can leave it as is to ceiling, meaning always round up or leave it as default, which will round to the nearest integer, we, uh, whether it's smaller and or higher to uh, from the five, or you can always floor it, meaning you always round down, no matter what. So that's the choice that I will give it to you, and you can um, experiment it yourself and see what works well for you. Okay. Uh, after that, what we have done right now is we got our column, so we can actually do a double merge now to put everything together. Uh, it's all the way here, I believe. Yeah. I don't need that. And this can be flattened. What is this? Oh, that's that. Okay. <clears throat> mm, I believe we can do a double merge. This one goes in here. And we're going to merge it with our 
example, main column outlines all the way there. Uh, we don't know. We don't need three. What we can do now is do a boundary from that. Gee, you can always flatten this one also. And uh, we are going to be extruding this based on a x value that is equal to the amount of floors times our floor height. And I'm trying to find that. We have it here. Uh, this is our floor. Do we have anything that's floor times floor heights? No, we don't. So we're going to make that one here. Floor times our floor height. Okay. And now we can put that at Z value. Just want to uh, move that up. What's this one actually? Oh, that's the closed loop. Uh, wow. Let's put a let's put a panel before the Z so we can see what value we're trying to uh, make into height. And we can call this height. oh we can call this height. There we go. And now we can use this one to make our columns. Uh, I want to copy the same color. What color did I give it? I think this one. Let's hide all that. Okay. Uh, the next thing. What's the next thing we need? We need our core, which is this one. No, I think we uh, we missed one, which is this one. So let's copy that one. It's actually just a, a curve offset based on a balcony depth like that so and we are also going to be boundary surfacing this one don't need to see that oh, do we need to see that probably not and I'm gonna drag this all the way up in here and I'm gonna copy that one that one no that one that one that one or did this one have a I thought it might have something else in it. Uh, the same for you. There we go. Oh, let's do this. There we go in here. And what else? Oh, floors, obviously. Uh, oh yeah, we need to do a region differencing on that. So let's pull up that region difference. So we're going to be subtracting the main, which is this one, we're going to subtract in the main from whatever is um, uh, inside. So basically the core and the columns outline. So we are going to do another merge from our outlines, the inner core outlines. We're going to drag these two all the way up here because that's where all the datas are. That's where the party's at. What's this? Okay, these are all the columns. I'm going to drag that one here. Uh, I'm going to put this one down there. I don't need these three. I'm going to flatten just in case. Even though I know they're flattened judging by their um, the the curve that goes in. Actually, oh, they're not. Ooh, sorry about that. Oh, the thick curve. I keep forgetting the meaning of that. But anyway, so let's flatten that one and we can put this one in here. So what we'll get, let's have a preview quickly, which looks all right. Uh, we need a boundary, so I'm just gonna copy that one. It's, it's a lot quicker than to search for the component itself. I'm gonna move this up a little bit. Uh, What do we have here? Okay, now we have to make the floor, and the floor is based on the series that we have here. And then what do we do there? We copy that into a move. So I'm just gonna copy this whole bit. Like so. Uh, yeah. 
This one goes here. Yeah, okay, I expect that to happen. Minus x, from what? Oh, um, that's the, uh, the, the, the floor thickness. So I'm just gonna, oh, drag this all the way into this one. And our floor, oh, I dragged it into the wrong one. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this one all the way up in here and drag it to that one. I do need an X value for that in order to drag it down. I don't need to graph this because there's only one value. There we go, that's the floor thickness. I'm gonna drag this one back. And actually, I'm gonna disconnect this one here for now because that one requires our series component. I'm gonna drag this all the way up here and connect that here. And there we go. And now, let's move this a little bit closer to the rest, to where the party's at. I'm gonna keep that open. I'm gonna enable this, and I'm gonna enable that. Oh, one thing I forgot to copy is a name. So we're gonna call this block three. That's fine. Let's select all this. I'm gonna group them. I'm gonna give it a nice different color. Red again. Hmm. Like that. Slightly different color. Okay. Um. By now, you basically have the base tower made. Let's take that and zoom in a bit. Have a look. Uh, there's still the um, roof terrace that I mentioned that we're going to be fixing, but we'll leave that to the next part. So the next part, uh, we're fixing the roof terraces uh, for all these, and also the um, uh, glazing, the balustrade glazing. It shouldn't be too hard, but. So those are the two things are the two main things we're going to be tackling in the next video. So I'll see you in the next video which will hopefully be the last part of this tutorial series.